we've got off to a very slow start today. It's almost midday, but today we're going to prune some trees and we're going to do a question and answer session while we're at it. You got your tools? What's yes. that? Two branches. Hmm. You got everything? Yep. So did we start this tree or did we just get distracted on the way? We got distracted on the way. <laughs> what's, what, what, hang on, what's your... We haven't discussed this. What's your method here? My method is like I'm cutting anything that doesn't have any green. Okay, so our plan with this almond tree, this is like the best almond tree we have and it's right by the house and it's got a couple of really big old branches which are only flowering right at the top which is kind of inconvenient. So we're trying to kind of slowly get rid of the old branches and yeah. favour the new ones. Yeah, everything that you see here, it's all new growth that we pruned. We pruned this one really aggressively last year. So all of this is like young growth from last year's pruning. So we're trying to train it to sort of be here instead of all <laughs> yeah. the way up there. So last year we took off one big branch here that you can see. That's gone. And every year we'll take off one massive branch and then hopefully the tree will sort of be smaller. found our next victim. <laughs> Yeah, I think we could be a bit more aggressive, but since this one is quite young and it doesn't have a lot going for it... I think it looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah. Next! Ready for your first question? Yep. Hope it's not eye related. No, none of these questions are like quick fire questions. I was hoping for like a quick fire question right now. What are we going to do about the drought if the drought continues? Oof. That is like straight yeah. like existential. <laughs> so we're in like year three of a drought in Spain at the moment. You might have seen on the news, Catalonia has just put in like serious water restrictions and stuff. Um, and they generally receive a bit more rain than us. So if they're having they trouble, rivers too. we're having trouble. <laughs> it is super dry. You can see like we're in the middle of winter and we're standing in a field that looks like it's the middle of summer. Everything is dry. There's been no like green growth in months or winter we haven't had enough rain for any of the seeds that were in the ground to germinate so everything is just all the dead dry stuff from summer yeah i think we're getting used to the idea we're starting to think that we might be lower in water in, even more than now in the future so we're increasing our water storage so that we can store water while the fountain is running and also um, so that we have the contingency that if we don't have water running on the fountain we can have a a cistern truck come and, and fill up the tanks. So what we're doing is, I think you've uh, seen it in a video, we've done some tests in the past, in a really high part next to the road, um, we have some IBC tanks, so like cubic thousand liter um, tanks, and we want to have as many of those really up there, um, so that we can have that as our buffer of water, and also so that we have pressure difference uh, around 10 12 meters uh, with the house so that water can just fall down and use it either for the house or for um, irrigation yeah i think we're thinking that if we had like 10 ibcs up there we've got three at the moment but if we had 10 then we could at least get a tank that usually deliver like 10,000 liters at a time um, to deliver water up there if we needed it so that would be our backup system at the minute the fountain has never run dry the spring where we get our water from but it's definitely a lot lower now than i've ever seen it in the last like three years it's still enough for us but uh yeah we're aware it could it could run dry we just we don't know we haven't seen we haven't seen a drought like this before a lot of people dig ponds um with like a big pond you have like hundreds of thousands of liters worth of water storage possibility so a pond is obviously like a really good option if you're trying to store water through a long stretch of the year it's also a massive investment though especially if you want to line it um, and choosing like the right place to put it and just 
choose just setting it up right i think takes a lot of thinking and a lot of knowledge so you don't have a lot of land either too yeah clear. and you would you would need a lot of like land to sacrifice to get the surface area so although a lot of people dig ponds as an option it's not something we're thinking about just yet i haven't really seen a pond um work to be honest um i don't know about you but i don't know anyone around here who's in person, yeah. yeah in person in this environment in this climate where we are i don't know anyone around here who's kind of got a pond and is doing water storage that way so I think it would have to be really well shaded because yeah. in the summer it would just like evaporate yeah we lose like centimeters of water a day to evaporation in the summer so if you're trying to store water through like nine months of no rain just think how much you're going to lose every day but yeah it's something that really worries us and it's something that not only threatens us but everyone in in, in this area and we are like seeing the effects at the moment. Quite hard to decide what to do with these trees because they're super close together. All the branches are touching. There's four along here and yeah, they just seem they just seem too close. Question? Yeah, go for it. We can both answer this one. How much is in what ways is parenting differing from what we expected? Um even though like like we have some tough nights, I think it has been fewer than I expected. But also at the same time, I think I expected he would sleep on his own, like in a crib more than he does. So uh, it's a lot more him sleeping on you for hours mm. than I expected. Mm -hmm. That's in terms of sleeping. I guess in terms of like his development, it's a lot faster than I thought it would be. Like you see new things every week. And that's that's really interesting to see. I didn't think it would be that that fast mm. and I, I think for me I didn't realize how useless the father is for a lot <laughs> of things <laughs> like sometimes it's like there's literally nothing I can do apart from changing a nappy or holding <laughs> him while you go to the bathroom so I expected uh, I expected more jobs for mm. me <laughs> um, but I, I know they will come later <laughs> I think one thing that surprised me was that I thought that like baby wearing was the solution to everything I mean, I know it's kind of working out now, but often it's not like this and there's very limited things you can actually do with a baby on you. I think I just thought that you could put them in a sling or a rucksack or a backpack type thing and just go about your normal business, but you're so limited in what you can actually do, what you can reach. I can't even reach the taps in the sink to like wash up, <laughs> you know, like there's very little you can actually do when you're baby wearing. It's still nice to do it and it's still nice to get outside and bring him along with us, but it's Mauro who's doing the pruning. I can't get anywhere near it because I don't want the branches to get in his face and I'm not really that mobile. Yeah, well, I think you expect him to be able to prune trees with a baby on no, you. No, not that specifically, <laughs> but like, the range of activities that you can actually do is way shorter than uh, a lot of people make it look like. not really sure I had that many like clear expectations or ideas of what it would look like because I really didn't know. So, I don't know, in some ways that makes it kind of really different to what I expected, but also... I didn't really have that many expectations to be surprised about. Yeah, I don't know. So it's, it's a hard question. I'm really thinking about it, but I don't know. Just taking it as it comes, I guess. Well, we've done maybe four or five trees and it took a bit longer than expected. It's lunchtime, so we're going to go get some lunch. Can we get that chili oil company to sponsor us? La Ganma. Yeah. Lao Ganma, if you're watching. I think that's the name of the thing. <laughs> we, like, we like your product. <laughs> yeah, we asked for some anonymous questions in case anyone wanted to ask spicy questions. We got a few. What's our favourite and least favourite things about Spanish culture? 
I'll, uh, I'll go first while you're entertaining the baby. Okay. <laughs> so one thing that we were talking about that we both sort of agree that we really like is the kind of different attitude towards like work and leisure um, that we sort of see and feel here. <coughs> Especially compared to like the UK where we were before. Like I love that people take the time they need to have lunch and go out and have a proper meal and spend time chatting after lunch and stuff. People aren't eating at their desks, at least in the places that I've worked, um, which was really just a co-working, but in the places where you work, you take a proper, like, long lunch break. And just that general attitude towards, like, going out and having fun and being with people and taking life a bit slower, I think um, we really like. Like, people are very relaxed and I find it that it's really easy to make friends. I think we've yeah. made really good friends really quickly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's a massive thing. It, it just like really changes like it really affects like your day to like it feels like something really shallow, like the oh people take time for lunch. But that uh, that it's is just, just like one example of a very like extended it's just like attitude. People aren't to, work obsessed, like yeah. like like family and relationships and yeah. just enjoying your life comes first. And, yeah. and it feels like work comes comes in between that. Yeah. I don't know. Well you've worked with more Spanish people than me, but how do you feel like People are less like work obsessed than yeah. in the UK, for example. Yeah, well, there, obviously there's everything, but yeah, like on average, a lot less, yes. Yeah. Can I say a quick bad one? Yeah. You want to say, you got a bad one to say something. Yeah, I'll, I'll say a quick bad one and like, I will fight, I will die on this hill. <laughs> oh God, Co go. coffee, coffee is bad, just bad. You go to <laughs> any, any normal Spanish bar and coffee will be bad. And, uh, it's the, what is it, twist it? Yeah, just the, the way they roast coffee, it's, ju <laughs> it's just bad. Fight me on it, like, ch try to change my mind, you won't. Coffee is bad. Should we make I would love to make we, a good coffee. Before yes. we finish this question. Good coffee? Yeah. Have I said that coffee is bad in Spain? You have mentioned good. that, yeah. Good. Next topic. <laughs> I've got to say, I've got to say, my least favorite thing. That was a minor. That was I've a minor a, hot take. I've Let's just do the good one. I've got to really offend the Spanish people now. So yeah. It sound better coming from me, right? Like the, the actual foreigner. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think like neither of us are. I think we're both like quite adaptable, and neither of us are like super traditional when it comes to like cultural things and practices and stuff like that. Which is why we've moved countries and are enjoying it and have a have a good time doing it. Like I don't think. Um, yeah, neither of us could really be like that offended by like different cultural stuff. Can I say another small thing? Good thing or bad thing? Bad thing. Sure, go for it. I have another hot take, oh, no. small bad thing about Spain, <laughs> and it is that books are expensive. Yeah, that's true. Fair that's enough. all I'm gonna yeah. say. It's an objective fact. Some, and I am comparing to other countries. Books in Spain are more expensive than but? books in the UK. Bookshops are better. Okay, I've got a question for you. Oh what are you what are you doing right now? That's not that's not the question. I'm developing at least three horsepower of pack on this. What are you grinding? Mill. This is a green bean flour. Broad bean? Sorry, broad bean. <laughs> I mistake them. <laughs> they are green. Yes. But yeah, I'm grinding flour from broad beans in a very powerful way. Okay, I've actually got a question for you now. Oh, I'm, ex I'm excited about this one. I want to see your unfiltered reaction. <laughs> the question is, do you regret not taking the time to finish the house properly before having a baby? <laughs> 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 no, I don't. <laughs> you don't regret? No, of course not. What? We, do you? No. <laughs> it made me laugh, the wording, which I'm sure wasn't intended in a bad way. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> I, the phrasing I knew the, the wording question. would make you laugh. Yeah, yeah. The wording of the question. <laughs> no. Do we regret not taking the time? Like, what, what else do you think we were doing for the last year? Apart yeah. from desperately trying to finish the house before All we've our 10 week last... premature baby came home yeah. from the hospital. <laughs> If I have to use one word to describe what we've done for the last three years of our lives, it's take time to do things. <laughs> um, it might not have been in the right order, it might not have been like with the right amount of skills or whatever, 
but you can't really say that we haven't taken time to do things. It's not like we were just sitting around drinking sangria and enjoying the good life here. <laughs> yeah, and I sorry, wish. sorry. Oops, <laughs> nine months passed. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe there's things that we regret in terms of the order of stuff that we did, but not even. We had everything really well planned out, I think, to finish everything that we needed to finish by the time Santi was going to be born. It's actually a miracle that we finished everything that we needed to by the time Two we came home from the months. hospital. We had the building work planned, we had we knew what we were going to have to do after that to finish, to get the house properly sealed and insulated, and somehow we managed to do that almost before he came home from the hospital with everything else that was going on. So I can't really say that we regret anything. And we also, like, we knew that I would have the paternity leave and that would enable mm. us to do a lot of work. I regret some things that we've done, but 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 not that. We were no. just unlucky with the whole premature yeah. thing. I think like looking back it would be easy to say it would be easy to think, oh I regret spending such a lot of effort on the garden, maybe in like my first year for example and not on the house. That was this was like years ago. This was before we even knew we were gonna have a baby. Maybe that first year I could have spent more time doing other things, but also we le I learned a lot that year. The house at that time wasn't a priority because I was here on my own and it was livable and it was absolutely fine for me. Yeah, I don't know, I think if we did another project, if we, if we just started again from scratch, there's definitely things we'd do differently, knowing what we know now, but we had to learn the skills that we've got now as well. Yeah. And I think that's an important part, like it's really hard to just start renovating when you don't have the experience, you'll do stuff wrong, so we kind of had to start slowly and start on the things that allowed us to learn in the process. Like we say in Argentina, it's like con el diario del lunes. Like with with Monday's newspaper, it's really easy to like say, okay, I should have done this or, <laughs> or this this way or this the other way. And I think objectively, we could regret things. Like if we think about it, rationalize it, and like say, okay, yeah, we should have done it in this order. But I think it doesn't help us now to think in that way. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. Okay, so it's about two weeks later and uh, we're back to finish this video. We have been continuing to prune the trees, but we've had a couple of weeks of really windy weather, so it wasn't really much good for filming. The original plan was to prune all the trees and film the Q&A in the process, but yeah, that didn't really happen with the wind. So we are back in the kitchen today and we're going to be doing something really exciting. We're going to be um, grouting all the tiles in the kitchen, which is one of the last jobs in the famous finished <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> First of all, we're going to sweep the floor and give it a really good hoover and get everything clean and then we can start grouting. We got time on our side, in a state of Look how dusty these jars are. You can't even see what they are. Artichokes. That's good food. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's just so dusty. <laughs> oh, wow. We Whoa. forgot we forgot about the tile casualty. Should we should we replace that tile while we're at it? Yeah, we had a cast iron pan accident here. Okay, so Mauro has done a really good job getting started on this and tidying up the kitchen and he's done a good section this morning and now this afternoon I'm going to try and finish everything. I know it's been absolutely ages since we actually laid the floor in the kitchen. You might be wondering why it's taken us almost six months to grow out. The reason is because we had to finish building the last piece of brickwork, the final countertop, which uh, the camera is sitting on right now, I'll show you in a second. It's not quite done, but we had to get that in place to know where to tile around, and yeah, it just took a long, a long time to kind of get on with that job. Yeah, I've also got to fix 
the broken tile that's annoying. Probably should have done that before making a mix of grout, but never mind, I'll use what I've got and get on with it. So excited about getting this floor fully grouted because all the time it hasn't been grouted, it's been really hard to clean because I don't, you know, you don't want the water or whatever to go in between the cracks and just get stuck there. So it's been really hard to clean the kitchen floor in general and it's just been so dirty for so long. It's gonna be so good to actually be able to mop it. <laughs> anyway, I guess I better answer some questions. That's what we're here for. So another question we get asked a lot, different variations of it is, how Santi? Um, what's going on with him? When is his next surgery? What is his next surgery? What condition does he have? Um, why are we being so secretive about it? Why, um, why haven't we shared certain things? And I totally get where these questions are coming from because we've shared aspects of our story with Santi and our stay in the NICU and stuff like that. And I can see that, you know, people are interested, concerned, want to know how he's doing, can see that there's gaps in the story that we're not sharing and are curious and I totally get that. And I think just what I would say from our point of view is that we're trying to share our side of the story, like having a baby in the hospital and everything that happened has been part of our lives. And that's the side that we're kind of trying to share so that you know where we are and you know what's going on. Um, in our lives but anything that relates like just to him and is kind of his story um, I don't think it's our place to share I mean it's one thing to say oh my baby's got a cold or the flu or a tummy bug I mean all babies get that and it passes it's fine it's not that's that's different but I think sharing more specific like medical details about conditions and stuff like that is something that is not our place to do in some ways I wish we hadn't um, shared anything about this whole journey with him because it's also his journey and it's also like his experience and he might not want that shared and maybe in the future I'll change my mind and I'll take down a bunch of videos um, and we won't have that stuff kind of public. It's been a hard like balance because you know we disappeared for a long time and obviously stuff was going on and, and it felt right and fair to share that from our point of view but also like it's it's his story as well so it's a Balance, I guess, that all people who share anything have to kind of find what works for them and what they feel um, comfortable with. So for everyone who like shares well wishes and asks after him and wants to know that he's doing okay, that's really lovely and we really appreciate that. And uh, we share what we feel um, comfortable with. But yeah, it's just not our story to tell. Okay, I'm so close to being done here, just hoping <laughs> this sponge will last for the very final stretch. It's looking really good, I think. The floor is probably cleaner than it's ever been, so <laughs> that's something. I did not manage to chip away all the tile adhesive from the broken tile. I was just going to be there all afternoon if I was trying to do that with the hammer and the chisel. I think it's a job for the angle grinder, but I really don't want to create so much dust in here. So I think it's a two person job. One person with the angle grinder and maybe someone else with the vacuum cleaner, like hoovering up the dust as we go. Maybe that'll uh, keep the kitchen a little bit less dusty. Anyway, I'm going to have to wrap up soon, go and have a shower. And uh, Santi's probably going to wake up from a really long nap any minute now. 
so Mauro will have to do the second wash down of the floor. I will try and answer a couple more questions um, before I finish. So a question we were asked a few times as well is um, what do we miss about our previous life or like life in the city? And we've answered this question before in another Q&A video and I'm pretty sure that that time we said oh nothing really, nothing at all. Um, and I thought I would answer it again because this time, I think I could give a slightly more nuanced answer. Right now, I don't really miss anything. Um, it's nice to go to the city sometimes, that's great, but living there, I, I don't miss it. However, the last year has been really hard um, for us here, and there's definitely been a lot of times that we've thought, wondered why we chose to make our lives harder for ourselves in the short term. We still absolutely stand by the decision that we've made to come out here. We think we're, we're confident, we know that in the long run, um, building the life that we're trying to build here is the right decision for us and it's what we want to do um, and it will, we believe it will pay off in the long run but when you have a hard time, when there's illness, um, when there's other <laughs> hard things you know in your life, having all of that on top of a life that you've already kind of chosen to be a little bit harder than the more conventional life um, adds up, like how much harder are you willing to deal with. It's all very well when you're healthy, when everything's fine, when you don't have the added stress and pressures of other things going on, other people in your family being unwell, um, just other hard stuff, <laughs> added to hard stuff, definitely makes you question sometimes how much hard stuff you can cope with. Most of that hard stuff is over now, so we're okay, we're back like on our feet and um, we're happy we're here but I think this last year if you've watched our videos and you followed our story over the last sort of 12 18 months probably you're thinking the same thing like wow yeah this homesteading off grid building everything from scratch thing it's all really nice when everything's going well but wow it's hard when things are not going well you're only healthy temporarily everyone's going to go through periods where they're not healthy and they're disabled effectively whether it's for a long time or a short time and in those situations yeah you do miss the convenience of life just being a little bit easier. At this particular moment in time, I would also say that I miss the ease and the convenience of being able to like join groups. It would be really nice to be able to like join mother's groups um, or baby groups a bit more easily um, and not have to make such a long trip to the city if I wanted to do that. But that's just a really specific point in our lives right now because of the age that Santi is, it's not going to last for all that much longer. Um, so that's just a small thing like relevant to this particular moment in time. But no, in general, we don't miss anything. Um, but yeah, things to think about, I guess. Okay, I've had my shower and uh, Santi is up falling asleep with Mauro again. So I'm just going to try and get the last, the second wash down of this floor done myself before dinner. And I will answer the final two questions, uh, which are quite quick ones. So another question I wanted to answer is about volunteers. We get this question a lot in different forms. Um, do we have volunteers? Why don't we have volunteers? Um, when will we get volunteers? Maybe they could help. Can I be a volunteer? We do occasionally have volunteers, as you will have seen in some videos. Occasionally there is someone here helping us, um, or sometimes a couple of people, it depends. But we're not really open officially to volunteers, we're not on any of the websites like Workaway or Woofing or anything like that. Um, it's just very occasionally someone will email us and you know the stars will align and we'll have a project on um, or, or we'll um, really feel like we could use a pair of hands and we feel like we can give that person something meaningful to do. So occasionally it'll work out and um, we will have someone. But in general, we don't and that's usually because we just, well, partly because we don't feel like we can at that moment provide a really meaningful experience um, or maybe we've got issues with accommodation like at the minute we don't have the bell tent because it blew down um, so that's also an issue but even when we had the bell tent a lot of the time we just didn't want to be like inventing projects and stuff just to keep people occupied and busy and we also didn't want people here just sort of helping us on our day-to-day -day things because that's not I feel like it, that's not a sustainable way to kind of run a homestead. If we need help just watering the garden and feeding the animals and stuff like that, I mean, it's lovely to have that help, but if we rely on that help, that's, to me, that's not sustainable. So we would like to have people for specific projects when we do them, you know, for more like week-long or multiple week-long things. When we built the goat, the goat shelter, for example, uh, we had people for that. But we don't always have that kind of project going, you know, like it's a lot of organisation, cost, 
um, materials, getting everything ready. Uh, we can't afford to do that kind of big project all the time. And having, a volunteer, having volunteers here also adds to your cost of food and everything like that and the amount of time that you're also spending like preparing food uh, making sure that everything is kind of organized to have more people around like the, the added pressure that they put on um, just the infrastructure in general like it's more than you would think and it can make it quite stressful so we do it occasionally when it kind of works out but it's not something that at the minute we're in a position to do like regularly we're just not set up for that yet so I'm going to make use of the final two questions to do a little bit of self-promotion, which I know I'm really bad at. So one question that um, we've been asked is what are our main plans for the garden this year? Um, well, I talk a little bit more about that in our newsletter. It's over on Substack, so if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter and get a bit more monthly in-depth updates from us about things that we're thinking about, especially like future things and ideas that we have. This last month I talked about some of our big plans for the garden, so do subscribe um, if you want. So yeah, rather than talk about our garden plans more now, I will let you read that if you would like. And the final question is why don't we get or um, do we have a Patreon? And uh, yes we do, I probably don't talk about it enough um, if people are asking whether we have one. But yeah we do, the link is in the description on every video. There are a bunch of people supporting us over there and we really really appreciate it, it makes a big difference to know that we're getting some income every month even if we can't manage a video every single week and um, sometimes you release extra videos over there or articles or just little updates that maybe we don't want to share like with the whole world oh and the videos on patreon are also released early a few days early and they have no adverts in them so you can watch everything without the adverts so i think that is it for this video thank you for watching and we'll see you next time